Yeah, we're back here with Wes Marsh, and he has a uh, diesel-powered Miata that he develops the fuel for himself. It's a biodiesel fuel that he has a certain procedure of uh, creating. Uh, let's take a look at it. Okay, uh, this is the where the biodiesel process starts here in, in, uh, in my shop. Uh, I, I obtained the uh, old waste cooking oil, which comes in uh, uh, some pretty nasty looking stuff sometimes when it comes out of the cookers, but uh, uh, I get it in bulk form. Uh, first thing I do is I pour it through this screen here, and uh, this takes the large chunks uh, uh, out of the oil. And the uh, reason why I take the large chunks out first is because those chunks contain moisture, and moisture is, uh, is not a good item to have when you're, when you're making fuel. The first thing I do is strain the oil to get the large, large chunks of, uh, of uh, meat and things out of it, and I run them through a sock, just a plain old sock, and uh, I run them into this container, and then I pump them up into my storage tank. Uh, which I uh, have up here, and this is uh, where I store my, my waste cooking oil, and it's ready to be processed in, in the reactor. Okay, and I have this pipe, I put this plumbing overhead, and it comes over here to the processor. And this processor is a uh, converted hot water heater. And this is where the uh, magic takes place. Okay, and, and when I transfer the waste cooking oil over here, then uh, I'll, I'll put it in here and recirculate it uh, by a pump and heat it up to 130 degrees temperature. And, and I do this to, uh, one, help set, settle any moisture that's in there out, and then also I take, uh, I take a sample of that oil at 130 degrees and I run some chemical tests on it to find out what the pH level is and uh, whether it's acid or base or, or what. And, and I use that figure on that test to mix up s sodium hydroxide and methanol. Now, I mix that in a certain percentage uh, according to my test, and that makes sodium methoxide. Okay, uh, sodium methoxide is a mixture of methanol and sodium hydroxide. You mix it up and put it in here in a uh, certain percentage, and it mixes it. I've made my own mixture here and everything, and it stirs it until it's completely dissolved. And when it's completely dissolved, then I transfer it through these valves over into the reactor while it's circulating. And uh, this takes about 10 minutes to slowly, to slowly take all of this in uh, into here, and then. And when all of this uh, sodium methoxide is transferred in, I turn, turn my valves off and I recirculate this and heat it for two hours. And uh, at the end of two hours, then I will uh, turn, this, turn the system off and let it settle. And the reason why it settles is because at that point, the glycerins will separate from the esters. And all the glycerin will go to the bottom down here and the uh, other good stuff is going to be at the top. Okay, this is a bottle, a uh, sample bottle, and I'm showing you what we start with. This is cooking oil that it just can't come from my storage. Okay, this bottle here is after I have done, uh, been through the processor, is heated and cooked for two hours and settling out. The esters are clear on the top and the bottom down here is pure glycerin. And, and <clears throat> after that, then this right here is uh, the next stage, which is the wash stage. You take the esters from here and run water through it. And that water cleans it, takes all the extra lye and other chemicals out, and it goes to the bottom, and, and your clean fuel is the result. And this is also a, a sample of clean fuel that I did about four years ago. Wow, that really is clean, Les. I see where you use this process to refine it. Yes, it's, uh, it's taken uh, several years to get this process down to make uh, real good fuel. Uh, you can make fuel uh, probably in, a, in an hour or two, you know, exceptionally good fuel. 
it takes about two weeks to really make some uh, excellent uh, fuel that will pass the ASTM test. Okay, this, this, this tank right here holds the esters of the, of the fuel in it, and it's a wash tank. And I have some nozzles here and spray water, and that water goes through that fuel. As it goes through the fuel, it takes the impurities out, the leftover lye and uh, alcohol and anything else in there, and it, uh, gets, and it goes to the bottom, and the water circulates to the bottom. Uh, this is my sample that I take so that I can monitor what's going on. Uh, and I, this is the ester fuel, the same as what will be in my processor. It's a sample of what is in my wash tank. Now the water is used to cleanse it, and I take and put it in this bottle just to give an example of how it separates from, from the esters. Uh, and that, uh, the reason why you put it in water is to, take, is to clean the oil. And if this oil was not good uh, through this process here, then uh, this water would congeal with it and you'd have a mess. So, so care has to be taken to make sure you have a good process here. Okay, this is something I've just uh, developed and, and added to my process uh, lately. It's a methanol recovery system. And uh, what happens when I take uh, and drain the glycerin off, it contains the methanol that was in the sodium uh, hydroxide, the uh, sodium methoxide, and so I, I'll drain the glycerin off and I'll put it in here, and I'll heat it up to about 140 degrees and circulate it. Now methanol evaporates at 140 degrees, so as it circulates through here and the temperature rises, then the methanol comes back out of the glycerin, and I recover it back down here. So I can recover about 30 to 35 percent of my initial cost into the uh, methanol, and that cuts my uh, end fuel cost to about 35 cents a gallon of fuel.